So one of the things you may notice when you come through the aviary are the different ways we keep our birds inside their habitats. This is a really good example. We use piano wire in the majority of our habitats, and this is strung at about a half inch width, which allows us to put smaller species of birds in this space that can't get through this wire. Next door is a, a wire that's strung at about an inch in width, so we have uh, some limitations. We can't put anybody really small in there because the birds could escape. Uh, we also use glass in our jewel habitat when you first come in, as well as our penguin habitat. And then we have uh, zoo mesh, which is a really fine weave stainless steel material that allows you to put even tiny little birds in it because the gaps are very small. You can't even get a pencil through the diameter of the stainless steel mesh. So that allows you to put really small birds in those habitats. And then in our Borneo habitat, where we have our rhino hornbills, uh, we have a phantom mesh, which is a, basically a mesh weave that's much more robust and thick because those are very big, strong birds and capable of doing a lot of damage to something like the zoo mesh. So when it comes to enclosure design, you want materials that allow for maximum viewability of the animals inside the habitat. And we really like this piano wire because when you're looking at the birds inside the habitat, it almost disappears in front of you. Uh, glass is transparent, so obviously no problems there. And uh, the zoo mesh is very fine, and when it's painted black, again, when you focus on the bird, you almost don't even see the enclosure material. So a lot of considerations go into uh, enclosures and, and providing safe habitats for the birds that they aren't gonna get tangled up in or escape, but also keep them separated from our guests. Uh, in addition to a lot of other subtleties that the avian keepers have to be really good at to get the amount of reproduction and successful breeding that you see throughout this building. There's a lot of very various concerns, whether the photo period's correct, the temperature's correct, the humidity's correct. Are you providing the appropriate nesting materials for them to build their nests? Are you providing suitable, compatible partners uh, within that habitat, or are they aggressing on each other or making each other uh, uncomfortable so they aren't going to reproduce. So there's a lot of subtlety to having successful breeding programs that I don't think people fully grasp. It's not as easy as putting two animals together and they make babies. You have to be sensitive to all these environmental and social concerns as well.